Welcome back to the EQ7 Summer Drawing Series. We are working on block number four, which is our final block in this series. We hope you really learned a lot about drawing blocks in EQ7 and, and you had a good time with it. First thing we're going to do, like always, we're going to open our project. If you are new and just starting this series, you can start a new project by typing in a name for the project or you can go to open an existing project and open our EQ7 Summer Drawing Sew Along project file and click OK. Here are the blocks that we've already worked on and we're going to click close because we don't need that right now. Like always we're just going to go up to the block work table so click the work on block button if you're not already on the block work table. And for this lesson we're actually going to be drawing combination blocks. We're going to be drawing blocks that contain both piece and applique. So we'll be working with the easy draw and patch draw work tables. So this option here under block, new block, easy draw plus patch draw. Choose that. Now down here at the bottom you can see that there's an easy draw tab and an applique tab. Easy draw has the same tools as we worked on in the first lesson. Applique has the same tools that we worked on in lesson three. So we're already familiar with the tools, we just have to apply it now. So go back to the Easy Draw work table and in the precision bar at the top we're going to change our settings to 12, 12, 24, 24. Graph paper cells, make sure this is turned on. And for horizontal and vertical settings we're going to choose 6 and 6. Now with that said, since our block is a 12 inch block and we have graph paper cells at 6 and 6, that puts graph paper at every 2 inches. You can say 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now our snaps are set to double the 12 inches, so our snaps are actually at every half inch. So again, like we did in lesson 1, you can see that it's snapping at every half inch. This line. For our snap settings, make sure that you do have these options selected and this one turned off. Go ahead and click the line tool. Now we're going to draw a vertical line at the 6 inch mark and go all the way down to the bottom and release and then another at the 6 inch mark on the horizontal, click, drag, and release. Now starting in the center, we're going to start here at the 4 inch. See if you're looking at the 4 inch here in the center line and, and draw over to the 8 inch vertical and release. So I'm going to here. So again we're going to start at the 8 inch and go down to the center line and release and from 8 inches horizontal, this is where I'm looking, 8 inch horizontal, we're going to go up to 6 inch horizontal and 4 inch vertical and release and now we're going to go back up to our starting point here and we've created a center diamond. Now starting at the 2 inch mark on the left edge of the block we're going to draw a diagonal line up to the other 2 inch line and then starting at the 4 inch mark drag to the other 4 inch so we have two diagonal lines in the corners. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other corners. Now when you're using Easy Draw, it's not a very good idea to copy and paste lines. I know in some of the previous lessons we were able to select a line, copy it or clone it, rotate it and move it. And that's not a very good idea to do that with Easy Draw because you're really depending upon the snap points and sometimes when copying and pasting, things won't snap into place appropriately. Just a little tip there. Okay, so I've drawn all of my corner lines. I'm going to add to sketchbook to save my in progress drawing. Now let's click the applique tab. You can still see your drawing but you cannot select these lines. These lines are not actually on this work table, they are on the easy draw work table. So even though you can see them and they look like they're there, they're on the easy draw work table and you cannot select them. So just keep that in mind. Now with the pick tool selected, I'm going to come over here to the snapping options and turn all of these options on. 
So you have all five options turned on. Now click the line tool and make sure in your precision bar that the option for autofill is turned on. It just makes things a little bit easier when you're drawing. This will fill each patch with a cream color fill so that you know your patch is closed. So make sure that's turned on. First we're going to start by drawing a wide bottom triangle. So starting at the grid point at three inches across and three inches down. So three inches across and three inches down puts us about here. We're going to draw a horizontal line to the grid point at nine inches across and three inches down. So we're going to go all the way over here to nine and release. Starting at the end point of the previous line, which is what we just drew, draw a diagonal line up to the one inch mark on the center vertical line. So starting at that same grid point that I started at originally, I'm going to draw all the way up to the one inch mark and then back down to our original starting point. And now we have a triangle here. Because we have the auto join snap settings selected, it automatically closes that shape for us, which was nice for, for right here. So we don't have to worry about trying to get that line to, to close that shape. So now we're going to adjust our shape a little bit. We're going to choose the, the shape tool actually. And click the little red square on the shape tool as well. That gives us more options to work with when editing our shape. We're going to change all of the three straight lines to curves. So click on a line with your shape tool and then click to curve in the edit arc box right here. You can see there's two handles that have been created here on this line. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two lines to curve. So now this line is a curve. And now for this one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to use the precision bar instead of the edit arc box. These, all of these options that are in this box are also available on the precision bar. So you can use whichever one you want. So here I'm going to select this line and choose the to curve option. Now that I have all of my lines converted to curves, I'm going to adjust my points to make everything a little bit smoother. So now I have selected this top node. So click on the node and in the edit node box, notice how this changed to edit node rather than edit arc. I'm going to choose smooth. Now again, this option is also available here in the precision bar. You can see that here. Now just pull these handles down and adjust the curve that way. I'm just going to pull both sides out to the graph paper cell lines and keeping this horizontal as straight as possible. Now for the sides I'm going to click and adjust the curves here as well. I'm just trying to make this arc a little bit better. Go over here and do the same thing. A nice curved shape. Now let's edit this bottom a little bit. We're going to give this a little bit of a curve as well. I'm just going to click and pull these handles up a little bit. That looks good so let's choose the pick tool and click on the small red box here as well and I'm going to select my patch. Now you can't select the patch by clicking in the inside of the patch. You have to actually select it by choosing the outside edge of the patch and I can now clone and rotate this patch all around. Now, now once again the tools that are shown in this symmetry box are also available on the precision bar so I'm going to use those interchangeably um, you can follow the directions and just use what's in this box or you can just see what other options are available up here. So for the first one I'm going to just clone and rotate like it says in the instructions and pull this so that the ends are touching and it snaps into place. 
Now for the next one, I'm going to use, use the precision bar. So I will clone and rotate 90 degrees. and bring it down, or you can go back and use the symmetry box, clone, and rotate 90, and snaps into place. So let's go to our color tab now. You can see how nice and easy that was to create a piece block with applique. All right, let's color this. I'm going to go over here. just selecting a color. You can use solid colors or fabrics. And use the spray can tool for this last one. You can do whatever you would like. And I'm going to color in the last with white. And now add a sketchbook of course. Now let's view the sketchbook and see all of our blocks. Here are all of our blocks so far. Select the last block we just added and choose note card. Like always, we're gonna name this block EQ7 Summer Drawing Block 4. And you can add any notes to the note section, 12 inches by 12 inches drawn on easy draw plus patch draw work table. Now click the X and all your information will save in that block. And I'm also going to close the sketchbook. So now let's print. I'd like for you to just choose which kind of printing style you'd like to use because everybody sews differently. However that does come with caveats because this block having applique as well as pieced, obviously you cannot foundation piece an applique block. So you have to keep that in mind as you're looking through these options. So if we're going to look at, let's start with, let's start with rotary cutting actually. Now rotary cutting does not allow for applique blocks or any kind of odd shaped non-rotary cuttable pieces. So, and it says that down here, chart shows only rotary, rotary cuttable patches. So let's set up our block and I will show you what that does. So make sure that you have 12 inches in the width and height and set your seam allowance. Now here I'm going to preview. <clears throat> now you can see in this chart it's only showing A and B patches down here as cutting instructions. That's because patch number patch C, which is this green, cannot be rotary cut. It's just an odd shape patch. And also the applique pieces are not shown as well. So if you wanted to use rotary cutting and use these dimensions for your A and B pieces, you can do that. But the other ones will not work for this option. So let me close this and we'll go to templates. Make sure 12 and 12 is showing. You can put seam allowance on if you'd like to or you can turn it off. I'm going to turn mine on and preview. Now it's up to you with this. If you're going, if you know you're going to foundation piece the piece part of this block, then we can get rid of those patterns on this printout. So let's do that. Let's delete what we know we're going to foundation piece because we don't need those printouts. So I click the delete key or delete button and select the patches I don't need and hit the delete key on your keyboard. Delete delete, delete. I'm going to zoom back out to the screen. And what I'm left with are my applique pieces. And I can move those around. Since they're all the same shape, I can delete and just print the one. It's up to you. Some people like to print all of the template pieces even though they're all the same. So now you're only going to be printing two sheets. This one won't print even though there's, it's showing here. There's nothing on it so it's not going to print. So now you have your applique pieces. Now with that, we need to print our foundation patterns. So click close, no print foundation. You can see there is no numbering 
and no sections on here. So if I preview now, nothing's going to display because EQ can't number this because it has applique pieces. We have to do the sectioning and numbering ourselves for this one. So let's go to the sections tab and start there. Now you got to ignore the applique pieces. We don't, we don't need to even touch those. So I'm going to check this box and hit start over. So everybody would foundation piece a little bit differently, but I'm going to section and number these how I probably would do this. So I'm going to click this patch, this patch, this patch, this patch, and group. This patch, this patch, this patch, this patch, and group. Now you have all of them sectioned. Let's go back to the numbering tab. And you can see it's pre-numbered, but I always like to go through and number them myself too. So I hit change numbers, one, two, three, four, B1, B2. Now see, I messed up and I didn't click the B1 correctly. So I need to change that. And I'm gonna hold the shift key down and click on B1 and that's gonna erase that numbering. So now I'm gonna go back and choose B1, B2, B3, B4. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now let's preview. Here are our patches. However, let me check our options. My block was not set to 12, so let's change that and go back and preview again. And now there are my foundation patterns, and I can move them so they're not overlapping. And now print those and use those with the templates. Make sure you save your project. And you're all set. Thank you for taking part in this summer sew along.